Good morning, everyone. It is my great pleasure to be here to present to you the sustainability strategy for the University of Saskatchewan entitled Critical Path to Sustainability. First, I'd like to acknowledge that the University of Saskatchewan is on Treaty 6 territory and the homeland of the Métis. We pay our respect to the First Nations and Métis ancestors of this place and reaffirm our relationships with one another. It is particularly important for me to make this land acknowledgement as many of our Indigenous staff, faculty and students were instru instrumental in the development of this strategy. My name is Irina Creed and I am the President's Special Advisor on Sustainability. Sustainability is one of the four principles that lie at the heart of the university's strategic plan. Peter Stoichev believes that to be well positioned for the future, universities must place a high priority on sustainability. This is particularly true now with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals that are designed to transform our world by 2030. This is also particularly true for the University of Saskatchewan with a strategic plan to be what the world needs by mobilizing our knowledges into action. The importance of sustainability is being recognized by the global community. Times Higher Education has started the world's first university impact ranking. This ranking is based on the SDGs. This ranking represents a fundamental shift of focus from institutions relying mostly on inputs and outputs, like the number of students, the number of tuition dollars, and the number of publications to impact. In its inaugural uh, launch in 2019, it was based on a handful of the SDGs. This most recent year in 2020, the first year that the University of Saskatchewan participated in, all 17 of the SDGs could be represented in submissions from institutions. Our path to sustainability started in October 2019, when Peter Stoichev launched work on this strategy. We formed the President's Sustainability Advisory Circle and we started, supported the formation of a Student Sustainability Coalition. Together, we worked with the university community to develop the sustainability strategy that will go from 2021 to 2030. We have created a blueprint to achieve the SDGs from the perspective of the University of Saskatchewan. We are seeking your feedback in advance of bringing the strategy to the three governing bodies for endorsement. The timeline that we propose will be as follows. First, we are presenting it to the Senate today to get your feedback, and we will present it again in April for endorsement. Next, we will present it to the University Council for information in December and seek endorsement in January. And finally, after we have had endorsement from the Senate in April, we will present it to the Board of Governors for their endorsement. Our blueprint focuses on five commitments, five goals, and 17 actions. The five commitments are leveraging our place, modeling the way, empowering action, capitalizing on our strengths, and catalyzing social change. In the next slides, I'm going to go through each one of them in a bit more detail. Our first commitment, leverage our place. Here we commit to being responsive to our social, economic, environmental, and cultural settings, and to influence and be influenced by them as solutions are created, mobilized, and shared. Our goal is to be an engaged university that works in a coordinated and innovative way with communities to achieve the SDGs. We have three actions to achieve this goal. First, establish a joint university community advisory circle. Second, nurture and convene public discourse. And third, build bridges and create new portals 
portals for the communities to access the university for knowledge, and also portals for the university to put their knowledges to work into the community. We will continue to use a whole of university approach. The SDGs permeate throughout the entire institution. In this diagram, I'm showing you the institutional cross-cutting priorities, as well as the signature research areas for University of Saskatchewan. In terms of the institutional cross-cutting priorities established by the president, they include leadership, indigenization, equity, diversity, and inclusion, and innovation. And as you all know, the six signature areas include Indigenous peoples, One Health, food security, water security, energy and mineral resources, and synchrotron science. I've highlighted in different colors the SDGs as they map out onto our institution. The ones in red are where the University of Saskatchewan performed in the top 100 in its inaugural contributions to the impact ranking. You will see under innovation that we ranked number 79 in sustainable cities and communities and number 67 in peace, justice and strong institutions. We ranked number 12 in good health and well-being and number two in zero hunger. We also ranked number 38 in life below water and 56 and clean water and sanitation. What you'll also see in green are where we performed between 100 and 200 in this inaugural contribution from the University of Saskatchewan. This is a simply outstanding performance for this institution. Because it permeates throughout the whole institution, when we considered what governance structure the sustainability strategy would need, we also needed something that permeated through the institution. Peter and I are proposing the following governance structure as shown on this slide. First, in the, in the yellow diamond is the organization represented by the senior leadership of the university. The president has set the commitments on behalf of the university. A sustainability oversight committee will set priorities and allocate resources for achieving the commitments. And an Office of Sustainability will be responsible for the successful implementation of these priorities. We see the Office of Sustainability directed by a Chief Sustainability Officer who will be a member of the Sustainability Oversight Committee, Director of the Office of Sustainability, and Chair of Innovation Teams Tables. Next, I'll go to the innovation teams, which are in the green oval. These are intended to be purpose-led, fluid and dynamic, and led by vice president designates and deans designates, include key thought leaders from across campus. We can imagine innovation teams focused on areas such as transportation. How would we work with the city to improve the transportation system at the University of Saskatchewan. Another one could be how we could shift our energy to more renewable re uh, sources of energy. Yet another example could be the formation of a whole new undergraduate program that would intersect many of the colleges and schools on campus in the area of sustainability and the SDGs. The third part of the governance structure is the environment in the dark green square. Here, it is a, where the university community joint table will exist, a joint table of advisors, collaborators, and partners. The advisors will advise the senior leadership on drivers and trends influencing the sustainability strategy. And the collaborators and partners will include representation from governments, industry, as well as other stakeholders who can share their insights to the innovation teams and in turn the innovation teams can provide value to these collaborators and partners. Our second commitment is modeling the way. Here we commit to fostering an entrepreneurial campus spirit and utilizing the campus operations and community as a living laboratory to pilot and then diffuse and scale sustainability solutions. 
We have much to be proud of at the University of Saskatchewan, as seen in the signature areas of research as an example. For this commitment, we chose to focus on climate action. Our goal is to reduce USASC's greenhouse gas emissions 45% from their 2010 levels by 2030 and to achieve net zero emissions by 2050. This target was carefully selected because it represents the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change's recommendation for us to keep below 1.5 degree increase in temperature by 2030. We've identified four actions here. First, to invest responsibly and invest in sustainability solutions. Next, to bolster action and remove barriers. If certain policies, programs and practices go against our need to meet uh, the climate action objective, then we'll have to sensitize them so that we can meet the targets. Next, we want to align finance and accounting structures, norms and practices with emission goals. Some ideas here are to consider incorporating carbon accounting into the resource allocation models of the institution. And finally, to ensure accountability and transparency in our efforts to achieve this goal. University of Saskatchewan's current greenhouse gas emissions continue to rise. In this diagram, I'm showing it from the recent report released just this month uh, for the greenhouse gas inventory for the university. You will see the three scope emissions, scope one, two, and three. And you'll also see some data from the university uh, supporting this diagram. Overall, our scope one direct emissions are, in are increasing. Our scope two emissions are starting to see significant declines and our scope three emissions started to see declines, but then in 2018 jumped up uh, significantly. I'd like to suggest that that increase in 2018 for scope three emissions may be related to improved ways of monitoring scope three emissions rather than a substantial increase in air traffic, in, in air travel. Overall, we're seeing that we are reducing greenhouse gas emissions on a square meter basis, but because our student enrollments are increasing and because we're increasing our total building space as an institution, our greenhouse gases continue to rise. There's an emerging idea of scope four emissions, and I'm particularly excited about this area. Scope four emissions are emissions that will be avoided by working in a coordinated way to lead or to participate where others are leading in developing strategies and investing in projects and initiatives that align with regional, national and international climate agreements. The reason why I'm so excited about the scope for emissions is, it, is because it builds so well on our first commitment to leverage our place and to work with our city, our province, and our nation in reducing greenhouse gases. This plot here shows our history of greenhouse gas emissions and our projections of where we need to go to, to reach 2030. From 2006 to 2020, we've been relatively stable in our greenhouse gas emissions but much work will be needed to be done in the next 10 years if we are to reduce by 45% uh, percent to achieve our 2010 levels. Sorry, to reduce by 45% from our 2010 levels to achieve our 2030 goal. Our third commitment is to empower action. Here we commit to supporting a generation of learners and achievers to shift mindsets and expand skill sets to accelerate action to achieve the SDGs. Our goal is to ensure every faculty, staff and student has a holistic understanding of sustainability by promoting, enabling and engaging them to explore, discover and find ways to implement new ideas with the support of the entire institution. Our actions to achieve goal three are to equip individuals to be sustainability champions throughout their lives, 
to engage academic units in changing or modifying curricula, to include sustainability principles and information on the SDGs, to enable access to sustainability curricula for diverse learners and increase access and flexibility for these learners, and finally, to enable students to work with local community leaders to create sustainability solutions. We require shifts in values, mindsets, and skill sets to achieve the SDGs. This photo of a gathering in Saskatoon taken in 2015 shows that the Canadian population is aging and it is also changing. In particular, Indigenous population is increasing at a rate four times that of the rest of Canada. Whereas the Canadians have 62% uh, ages between 25 and 64 years old have an undergraduate education. While the numbers in the Indigenous population are increasing, they are still only at about 11%. That rep represents a significant gap 11% in the Indigenous population versus 62% in the rest of the Canadian population with undergraduate degrees. We want to offer curricula to meet the needs of diverse learners, including master learners and lifelong learners. This plot shows what we're imagining to be the suite of modes of delivery and, and the suite of credentials that we could be offering as a university. At the origin, we see that traditional bachelor's and graduate degrees and face-to-face -face are what we're doing now. But as we go from face-to-face -to, -face to technology supplements, face-to-face -to, -face, to blended learning, hybrid learning, and then fully online, we're seeing the full suite of modes of delivery that we can engage in. Much of this has been fast-tracked because of COVID-19 and its impact on institutions. On the other axis, in terms of the credential continuum, we see the traditional bachelor's and graduate degrees, but then we can start moving towards full degree variations, such as modular master's and secondary uh, bachelor's degrees. We can shift further to credentials that are not full degrees, such as badges and certificates. And then we can move to departures from credentials, such as boot camps. The exciting thing here is that as we shift to more online modes of delivery and shift to more discretized types of credentials, we are increasing the flexibility and ease of access to the people of Saskatchewan. Those who are interested in taking part-time study while working or adding breadth to a degree or seeking a promotion can come back to the University of Saskatchewan and get something customized to their needs. At the extremes, we can imagine the University of Saskatchewan moving towards massive open online courses or MOOCs on sustainability. I think that University of Saskatchewan has great potential of leading the country in terms of offering MOOCs on sustainability. Similarly, at the other extreme, we can go to small groups of on the land experiential field camps where we can encourage youth to reconnect to the land and embrace many of the indigenous ways of knowing with respect to sustainability. Our fourth commitment is to capitalize on strengths. Here we commit to bringing together the campus community to create knowledges focused on designing and implementing innovative and workable solutions to sustainability challenges. Our goal is to seamlessly integrate learning, discovery, innovation, and entrepreneurship, and thereby put our knowledge to work to achieve the SDGs. Three actions have been designed in support of this goal. First, to build our leadership in capacity in innovation. And here we mean innovation, both in terms of social innovation and technological innovation. Next, to create convergent innovation ecosystems with the capacity to pilot and perfect innovations. And finally, to forge and lead unique multi-community, multi-partner, and multi-sector collaborations 
to tackle the full spectrum of sustainability challenges from idea germination to real life solutions. We want to encourage all signature areas to include a focus on SDGs. Our signature areas bring us much pride. For example, the signature area of global water security has led to USASC water research being ranked number one in Canada and in the top 20 in the world for the last three years. In a forward thinking mindset, we can imagine a potential next step in the evolution of these signature areas through the creation of place-based innovation ecosystems that can pilot and perfect innovations. We already have a potential example here with the work being done by the University of Saskatchewan in the headwaters of the Saskatchewan River Basin the Saskatchewan River Basin that provides the water for so much of the agriculture that we depend on. Right now, professors from the University of Saskatchewan are working with community leaders in Canmore on water issues facing Canada and the world. Together, they produced a white paper suggesting the need for a modernization of the Canada Water Act and the formation of a Canada Water Agency. On September 23rd and 20, in September 23rd of this year, the Governor General in the throne speech announced that they will be creating a Canada Water Agency. This is just one example of the tremendous social impact that the University of Saskatchewan is already having in the area of sustainability. Our fifth commitment is to catalyze social change. Here, we commit to promoting, engaging, and supporting shared knowledges, expertise, and experiences to affect the change needed. Our goal is to make sustainability personally relevant and to inspire and be agents of positive change for our local communities and the world. To achieve this goal, we will engage in both local and global dialogue to develop a shared understanding of sustainability problems and solutions. We will ensure the voices in our learning environments and the research that we undertake are grounded in the principles of equity, diversity, and inclusion. And we will leverage networks and partnerships to harness actions for scalable solutions and to influence the political leaders to accept and act on these solutions, just as we did with the Canada Water Agency. There are many ways we can create positive social impact. We already have evidence of this. And if this was a more in-person meeting and I could ask the question of the audience, I'd be asking you to give me examples of what social impact do you feel the University of Saskatchewan has had? But because we're in a virtual reality, I encourage you to email your ideas about the social impacts that you think USASC has made. To summarize, we have five commitments, five goals, and 17 actions that will be realized at the level of the individual. We will need passionate, energetic, and committed individuals and when this happens, we will become unstoppable as an institution in our pursuits of achieving the SDGs. Thank you for your attention. And I ask that you please send me any and all feedback to me at irena.creed at usas.ca or you can call or text me at 306-261-9198. Thank you all.